Today's episode of the Roast West Coast podcast is sponsored by Leap Coffee. They are now roasting in their new location in Escondido. All of their great coffees are available to order online at leap.coffee. They have a lot in the works, so be sure to follow them on Instagram at Leap Coffee, where they just announced that they now offer cold brew growlers for pickup. All of the details online at leap.coffee. Hey everyone, welcome to the Roast West Coast podcast and the very first Coffee Smarter session of season two. Chris O'Brien, proprietor of Coffee Cycle and 90s boy band enthusiast, is back to teach us all a little bit more about coffee. Somehow in season one of the show, we made it all the way to the end without actually talking about the origins of coffee and where it comes from. We are going to remedy that today and catch up on what has been going on in Chris's coffee world. Now is the part of the show where I beg and plead and cajole you to go to roastwestcoast.com and sign up for the newsletter. If you do, you'll get this podcast embedded right into emails, plus bonus content including SoCal Coffee News, education, and links to all the stuff we talk about on the show. Plus, there's a lot more coming on the horizon. And I've got to remind you that at Roast West Coast is on Instagram, and we have a new Roast West Coast coffee group on Facebook. There you can connect with other coffee lovers and even some of the coffee pros that appear on this show, including Chris. And now, it's time for another episode of Coffee Smarter. I don't get to do this whole Zoom meeting, video chat thing very often. I'm going to have fun with it if I'm going to do it, you know. So, Chris O'Brien, welcome back to the Roast West Coast podcast. It's wonderful, truly wonderful to have you back for a second season. Before we get started with our Coffee Smarter questions for week one, I want to know what's going on with you. It's been a few months since we've had a chance to catch up. How's Coffee Cycle doing? Oh, man. Well, it is awesome to be back here with you, Ryan. I'm just really happy to be here. And, you know, I love chatting about coffee. The shop, Coffee Cycle, has been doing really well. Uh, You know, we opened up a big new outdoor patio, which is kind of what everyone did in this last year. Uh, so I guess it's not really news to anybody, but you know, we've just been serving some awesome coffees. We just started working pretty regularly with a new local roaster, um, because we like to work with multiple different roasters and, you know, just show off a diversity of coffee that way, as well as in the, uh, the world that it comes from. Yeah. Everything's been going really well. We got a great staff. We got some great customers, you know, we're headed into tourist season right now, which is always fun, uh, getting some some new people in to show them how we do things and just uh, kind of try to share with some new people how, how coffee is done. I've been training a couple new employees, um, which is honestly one of my favorite parts about working in coffee. I love talking about it and sharing what I've learned about it, which is why I'm here <laughs> today with you. I imagine that like, you know, training anyone that isn't me is probably a treat. That is true. That is true. Who, who's the local roaster that you're working with? You didn't say. Oh, uh, we started working with Nostalgia Coffee Roasters. They're really cool. Uh, it's a female-owned company that started with a mobile coffee shop, uh, similar to what I did. She built a coffee shop in a trailer, and really impressive, really beautiful job. She's got some really nice equipment in there, uh, but just a just a really altogether just really nice package of, of how to really condense the cafe experience um, into this this awesome mobile trailer. And then they have a roastery in a small warehouse up in the Mira Mesa area, um, a very small roaster. So when they do bigger batch things, they use California Roasting Collective, which I think you probably talked about with your one of your previous guests. I think you've had Elliot from. Yep from Steady State on, and I think he's the brains behind and the uh, the guy behind California Roasting Collective. So they've been roasting up there a little bit, roasting on their own smaller machine for some of their micro lots. And so we just brought on a Rwanda coffee from them that I'm really, really happy about. I'm, I'm so happy about it that I took a really nice washed Ethiopia coffee off the menu just so that I could bring it on. Whoa. Yeah. It wasn't even that hard. I loved that Rwanda so much. So, you know, it's, it's nice to get that excited about a coffee. And it's probably the most excited I've ever been for a Rwanda coffee. I'm looking forward to getting down and trying that. And I actually just ordered some of Elliot from Steady State's uh, Space Traveler coffee oh, cool. just this morning. So I'm excited cool. to pick that up this week. For our week one of Coffee Smarter, I want to go back in time 
Uh, something we somehow didn't talk about in season one, coffee. Who invented it? Who discovered it? Who realized that, hey, this cherry over here looks like it would be good if it were dried and ground and dipped in hot water and then I put it in my mouth? So that's kind of my question. What's the origin story of coffee? Well, you know, it's it's funny because when we think about a lot of food and food products that we eat, trying to imagine how someone got from, ooh, look at that plant over there, to here's this incredible thing it's sort of a, a, a big gap, but there is actually a, a specific legendary story in, in the coffee world that I've probably told you before, but I'd love to share with everybody else. Um, it's sort of a it's sort of a known thing in, in the coffee world, but all coffee originally comes from Ethiopia. There are wild coffee forests in Ethiopia, which is just crazy and awesome to me to think about. You know, coffee is not a, a tree, so to call it a forest is a little interesting. It's, it's considered a shrub, but these shrubs can get pretty tall, like way taller than you are. Um, and so you can wander the wild coffee forests of, of Ethiopia. And just across the sea from Ethiopia is Yemen. So it's, it's arguable that, that those wild coffee, uh, coffee shrubs are also found originally in Yemen, just as much as they are in Ethiopia. But generally say that all coffee originally comes from Ethiopia. And so, Way back in the day in Ethiopia, there's a goat herder walking along. And the goat herder's name is Kaldi. K-A-L-D-I. And Kaldi's walking along with his goats. Maybe he's got 20 goats or something. He's walking from point A to point B. And at point B, he goes and he sets up his camp. And he starts going and taking care of his 19 goats. And he says, wait, holy smokes, there's only 19 goats. Where's number 20? And so he starts hiking back along the path that he's been hiking along. And he finally finds the missing goat. And he grabs the goat by the whatever you grab a goat by. And he tries to bring the goat with him. And the goat's just acting crazy. The goat's hopping around, jumping up and down, just, you know, uh, getting on the microphone and singing. It's just the goat's just going nuts. And Caldy, the goat herd, realizes that there's this shrub nearby with these little red berries on it. And that the, go the goat has been eating these berries. And that's why the goat's all crazy. So he grabs a couple branches of these cherries, these berries, and he struggles with the goat and he brings it back to his campsite and he sort of starts experimenting. And, uh, and that's how we, we discovered coffee it was Caldi the goat herd. So you'll see a lot of coffee roasters or importers have a goat as one of its, as one of their symbols, a lot of Ethiopian coffee, uh, some, uh, does a goat as a symbol of coffee. Um, and the name Caldi will pop up sometimes in uh, different coffee shop names around the world. Interesting. So do we do we believe this story? Do we really think this goat herder discovered coffee? Or do we think that was a story that somebody told in effort to sell, you know, their neighbors on this idea that they should put this dirty cherry into their mouth? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you can eat the cherries and they're pretty tasty, but they're not necessarily everyone's favorite little fruit to snack on. And they've got these really large seeds in the middle that aren't fun to chew on. So, you know, to get to the point of removing the seeds, drying the seeds, then roasting the seeds, grinding it up, adding it to boiling water, removing the grounds, uh, you know, I don't know how someone gets quite there. That's definitely a bit of a stretch, but we definitely can't deny that the ultimate product is, is pretty amazing. And, um, you know, there's, there's fermentation along the way, and, uh, and a lot of great foods are fermented. And you know, it's, you think about tea and you think how simple tea is. You pluck some leaves off of a branch and you dry them and then you steep them in hot water and you make tea, right? Well, tea isn't that simple either. They're, they're fermenting it and fire roasting it in some cases and, you know, uh, tearing it in certain ways and rubbing it between their hands. And, you know, all these foods that we eat all have kind of incredibly arcane methods of, of preparation. And it's, it's sort of hard to tell exactly where they come from, but. You know, I'm, I'm definitely happy how far we've come with coffee preparation because I have ground coffee beans between two cast iron pans before when we didn't have a coffee grinder when camping. And That's I right. will tell you, it's not fun and the coffee doesn't taste very good. <laughs> <laughs> but if you didn't have anything to compare it to, I think I'm okay with sticking with this idea that Caldi discovered coffee. I, I like the story of it. And I'm also, I think I'm going to start researching goats and think about maybe you know, putting some time and effort into, into goat learning. You know, I, I think that would be good for you because, you know, when I think about you and I think about goats, it really brings like sort of a similar feeling to my, to my heart. So just joy and happiness. Yeah. So really just, just pursue that, pursue your dreams, you know, pursue your goat dreams, Ryan. 
Chris, I got to learn about coffee from you, so I've already achieved my dreams. Your goat dreams? My All of my dreams. <laughs> Either way, it's great to have you back. Thank you for coming and getting, uh, getting us all a little coffee smarter today. Uh, I'll see you again soon. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for the next one, Ryan. Thanks again for having me. I can never thank Chris O'Brien enough for all of the coffee knowledge and friendship he shared with me over the years. This show only exists because I kept thinking we should be recording the conversations we were having in the early days at his shop, Coffee Cycle. Somehow, even then, I knew we were being blessed with a rare moment in time, and that soon we'd be so busy we'd barely have time to breathe, much less have in-depth coffee conversations. When the pandemic unexpectedly presented me with some free time, Roast West Coast was born in an effort to recreate those conversations and dig even further into SoCal coffee culture. All of that to say, check out at coffee-cycle on Instagram, order some coffee from Chris on coffee-cycle.com, or head down to his shop in Pacific Beach. He always has a well-curated selection of coffees that are made so good or better than any other place I've ever found. Thank you all for listening to this episode and being excited for the upcoming episodes of the Roast West Coast podcast. This show will be back next week with an interview with Stephen Crocker, founder and head roaster at Crowbeard Coffee in Encinitas, California. If you've enjoyed today's show, and I hope you have, please share it with all your coffee-loving friends. Just let them know they can search for Roast West Coast on any of the major podcasting platforms, or better yet, just tell them to sign up for the newsletter at roastwestcoast.com. Thank you for helping me spread the word. If you are sharing your coffee journey on social media, tag at Roast West Coast so I can find you too. You might not know this, and I just found out, but April is National Poetry Month, and I'd like to end the show this week by sharing a snippet of this poem I found about coffee and the joy that comes with finding happiness in the moment. It was written by American poet Linda Pestan, and it's called The Happiest Day. I didn't even guess that I was happy. The small irritations that are like salt on melon were what I dwelt on, though in truth they simply made the fruit taste sweeter. So we sat on the porch in the cool morning, sipping hot coffee behind the news of the day. Strikes and small wars of fire somewhere, I could see the top of your dark head and thought not of public conflagrations, but of how it would feel on my bare shoulder. If someone could stop the camera then, if someone could only stop the camera and ask me, are you happy? Perhaps I would have noticed how the morning shone in the reflected color of lilac. Yes, I might have said, and offered a steaming cup of coffee. I'll link to the full poem and more information about the author, Linda Pastan, in the newsletter. But I think it pretty accurately reflects what coffee has meant to me over the past year. Taking those moments, just away from the news and away from the world, to enjoy being alive. Finally today, if you find yourself desiring some good coffee, please support your local coffee roasters and coffee shops. That money is going to go a long way in your own communities, and if we've learned anything this year, it's how much our community impacts us and how much we impact it. I've said that before, and I'm going to keep saying it. If you are in the SoCal area or interested in ordering some SoCal coffee, check out the great roasters and shops that the Roast West Coast podcast has partnered with this season to help uplift our local coffee community, including today's sponsor, Leap Coffee, and other great roasters like Zumbar Coffee and Tea, Steady State Roasting, Marea Coffee, Cafe La Terre, Coffee Cycle, and Moster Coffee. You can find links to their online shops in this podcast episode's notes or right on the front of RoastWestCoast.com. This episode of the Roast West Coast podcast has been produced and recorded by me, Ryan Wolt. I hope this show has found you happy, healthy, and with at least enough sanity to make it through the day. As always, I leave you with the same piece of advice. Be sure to drink good coffee. If you need some quality local news in your life while you're drinking your morning cup of coffee, check out the Voice of San Diego podcast. Made locally by investigative reporters and editors, Voice of San Diego hosts give a spitfire roundup of the news every Friday. You can listen to the Voice of San Diego now, wherever you get your podcasts. I think you'll like it.